Hello, welcome back to Ark Knights the Grinning Valley. Journey to the Grinning, the Grinning Valley? I don't know, remember. <laughs> Wait, let me check just in case. I think it's just to the Grinning Valley. I didn't mean to actually hit start yet. To the Grinning Valley. Welcome back to Ark Knights to the Grinning Valley. Um, I had a lot of fun reading the first two stories, so I'm excited to read more of it. I haven't read this one. I just clicked it and then hit skip when I realized that it wouldn't say, are you sure you want to read or something like that. It's like I click it and it's just like, oh, okay, we're just going straight to it. And it's like, it didn't give me a warning. You don't know where it's going to take you. Even worse, even when there aren't 30 odd, some, some odd siblings and hundreds of other relatives clamoring to make your decisions for you, you still sometimes find yourself under attack out of nowhere, such as, uh, right now. There are no, there are no think tanks. No, there's no way this could be wrong because everything, everyone believes it. Only a bandit pulling up a crossbow and a sand and the sand kicking up as hard as he drives. I made peace with my fate. Um, I don't think we can pass through Windy Beach. That place is catastrophe central. Each year, up to 70,000 trucks are damaged or destroyed when passing through. But that's not the point. Our transport's already pretty beat up. Also, you should... Oh, his name is Jerry? When did it say his name? Also, you should take a look at this. In addition to catastrophes, there are other factors that worsen the damage to a vehicle. Virginium fuel leakage, transmission failure, leading to secondary incidents, explosions in close proximity to mining sites. So, we'll want to steer clear of the mines. Hey, are you listening? Nope. That's right, Potlid. Climb up from here, saw off the branch, then connect the hose to the top of the tree. He wasn't. They they weren't listening, actually. Oh, the saw is so heavy. But it's okay. The ankle braces Lanz gave me are very secure. Just imagine <laughs> that you're a big tree must beast. You're a big tree must beast. Must beast. What a word. Use the branches to hold onto the tree and jump up with a whoosh. I know I can do this and make everyone happy. Nope. Huh? My back feels lighter all of a sudden. Boy, Jacker, I didn't tell you to do that. I'm sure you didn't tell me to do anything, but I have experience collecting water from bottle trees. Okay, so you have a heart after all. But I still need you to return Potlid's tools. After all, I certainly trust my old partner a whole lot more than I trust the random Jacker. <laughs> Besides, it's not like we're really trying to become a bottle tree water delivery truck. We just need to put out on enough of a disguise before entering the city that nobody can tell it's an intercity transport that's gone off route. Slap some decorations on as well. Don't let anyone see that old girl's been punched full of holes before being patched over with sheet metal. Potlid, let's go over our cover story with the jacker here. Okay. If anyone asks, tell them we're transporting this bottle tree and the water in the trunks gotta be bucketed up for transport into the factory. As for the tree branches, decorations on the vehicle, it's just been a little something the boss enjoys. That's right, bulletproof cover story. If I do say so myself, <laughs> never <laughs> would have imagined that these bottle trees would be saving our hides when we we're running, at, running from catastrophes on our long detour. Whoever decided to plant these bottle trees in the middle of nowhere, thank you. And of course, that includes me as well. Alrighty. Alrighty. Time to hop back in to the driver's cabin. Uh, are you listening to me? Uh, I just want to remind everyone that every, every year 300,000 people suffer fractures aboard transport vehicles for various seasons. 15,000 of each are attributed to bottle trees tipping over in transit. Ah, uh, just ignore him. I'll start the water pump slowly so there's no risk of falling off the tree. But accidents always happen. All right, I'm starting her up. Hold on tight, Potlid. Every year, every year, there are a thousand more people who die to tree trunks bending during sudden strong wind. I did it, Lons. This dude is hilarious. My lips are very... Oh, I ate some pretzels. Salty pretzels. The pump's starting to hum as it drains the water out of the tree trunk. <laughs> I love when this happens. Ha. Why else would I say I trust you? Oh, well, actually, there's a chance the, the water pump might explode as well. 
What's your deal? Is that a death note you're holding or what? <laughs> Whoa, that was fourth wall broken. Every year I hear about an old friend or two who ends up con contracting orpathy or getting caught in a catastrophe, regardless of what field they work in, no avoiding it. If we go by what you say, we're all better off not working in the first place. Oh, sorry, I just wanted to give you some points of reference from my limited knowledge and experience. I'm just trying to help. I, I do marketing for an insurance company. Insurance? It's the best thing I've ever ad I've seen advertised in years. I've already bought a bunch of policies and hope to get this Colombian company's name out there. But I, I'm a bit skittish, I'm afraid of everything. But there's insurance for everything I'm scared of, including dangers I had no idea even existed. Look, these are my notes. Data collected from several of our company's advertisements. Telling you about all the dangers you would have ever think of. Also, they promise to compensate me in the event that something really does happen. Cool. So, how do you plan to spend that money if you're dead? It'd be pretty cool if they invented a way to continue living after you die, though. Sure. Uh, I'm afraid there's not much we can do about that. Then what's the point? Listen up. You help dress the vehicle up, and we'll take it over. We'll take it on over to the nearby nomadic platform. Need to check if a buddy of mine is home. How many vehicles run in <laughs> catastrophes every year, and where? Doesn't mean shit to me. What? Oh, and where? Doesn't mean shit to me. I'll just. I'll just ask her straight up for a safe route through to the Grinning Valley safely, and now a si ask her straight up for a safe route to the Grinning si Valley safely. That's a weird sentence, and that'll be the end of things. Uh, how'd you even get to this point? I thought the little girl would just hide quietly in the truck in the vehicle. In the truck vehicle, okay. In the vehicle, so all I had to do was squeeze into the tool room with her. Felt like the safest thing at the time. But then she wanted me to go visit friends and relatives with Alana, leaving me alone in the vehicle. Here I am, alone in the hijacked <laughs> transport, harboring infected people, forced to work, getting shot at with rocket launchers and more than once. I can't handle these people chasing me, so I don't care who it is, who, who I have to follow. Just don't make <laughs> me deal with this whole mess alone. The, this is all money in my wallet. Here, take the whole thing, please. I never I never said I wasn't willing to follow you. I mean, it's only natural to not want to be a hostage, right? Hostage? I, I get it. You're the jacker. So if I go with you, I'll end up a hostage. But you were so cool when you saved those people back there. Like a real highwayman. That's not what I meant. I, I'm just trying to say you're really impressive. Me? Impressive? Why, yes, that's right. Um, you're not mad, are you? Thank goodness. Oh, uh, there is, um, there's one thing I wanted to ask you. Alana let you leave to buy those supplies we need to make the long distance trip. So, can we just do it like that and not resort to robbing people? See, I've, <laughs> I've even given you my wallet now. There might not be much money in there, but it should be enough to cover food and fuel. All right. <sighs> what a relief. Oh, right. Something was rubbing me the wrong way. You know how the men at the checkpoint were looking at us funny? I'm a professional. Do you think that we're under subs uh, suspicion? It's just, I never said I wanted to take a hostage. I said anyone who wanted to get off was free to go. Why didn't you go? Um, huh. I thought you told, I told you before. I want to go to Grinning Valley. That has nothing to do with you. It's a long and dangerous journey. And I knew that going in, which is why I gave you the chance to hop off. You're scared of danger, so why are you still here? Well, since you're such a nice person, would you mind coming with me to have a look at the newsstand? I can explain. N normally, this wouldn't be. Ray, my face is hidden by the newspaper, isn't it? Yes. Okay, now let's look a good look over there. Whew. Great, I haven't made it onto the list of missing persons yet. Though, so, uh, even if they did realize someone was missing, it wouldn't make it to the papers within a single day. What about wanted persons? Not seeing anything. It, it isn't what you think. I just skipped out on my marriage. 
Um, dude, that's not too smart. Why, though? Well, it's not that I got cold feet. I was taking this transport on my way to attend my engagement ceremony in another city when it, you, you hijacked it. But then I realized I was pretty happy about that. <laughs> Though, I guess that, I, I sh it's, that isn't some big deal either. And because it's not a big deal, I'm kind of embarrassed to talk about it. I don't know how it is with your family, but in my case, I got 36 brothers and sisters and lots of other relatives. So you find plenty of stuff ends up not worth talking about. That's fucking crazy. Alright, so maybe you don't get it. I also know there are lots of people with huge families that don't deal with this sort of thing. Sorry, can't help you with that one. Hold on, Ray. There are some uniformed men coming this way. The same as the last checkpoint. I didn't grow up in a big family. The houses all joined together neatly. It looked so beautiful. But I didn't know where I ought to settle myself down. The zalek has gone. Hmm. Probably decided to leave on his own. Should have hopped off to begin with. Good day, ma'am. We'd like to have a little chat with you. Don't be scared, Potlid. The pictures on the wall might be a bit spooky, but the lady here isn't into anything weird. She takes pictures of giant beasts' carcasses in the primordial forest, plus the bones of explorers in the more... Not anything weird, by the way. She never hurt anybody. <laughs> well, at least she probably wouldn't hurt anyone. Huh? You're not even talking back when I t call you Potlid? We're just Biriko. You hungry or something? To know if we could count on the jacker at all, but hopefully she manages to bring that stuff back without any issues. I'll show you a neat pack later. You can use solar panels to fry up some instant noodle cakes and foul beast eggs. Put the past behind you. Anyways, I have a solution now. Doesn't the jacker seem odd to you? Maybe even a bit crazy? Yes. That's why I decided to meet this friend and ask her about the situation. A shadow as tall as a mountain and it can talk? If a thing like that really exists, Rim Billiton, a fr my friend, surely would have heard of it. But the jacker simply had too much to drink or went into the mines without a helmet and hit her head. Well, I'll have to figure it out something else out. Don't worry, they call don't call me Alana of the Barren Lands for nothing. I'll always figure something out. Why is Potlet sad? Get lost and be quick of asbestos. <laughs> yeah? The asbestos would kill you pretty quick, so getting rid of you. And be quick about it. I'm busy with my travel notes. Didn't you see the sign on the door? Oh? Wait, not many <laughs> know about my temporary studio in the first place. Which rag do you work for? Rag? Rig? Rag? Weird. Which rag do you work for? And how do you manage to track me down? Lans, didn't you say you were old friends? She doesn't seem to recognize you. Heh, <laughs> well the old part means we haven't seen each other in a long time. Hey, remember that time we went down to Big Hammer Mine? There was that one mangler beast trying to tear us apart. Reckon that was the biggest mangler beast known to man. Right, right. It's the one on the wall there. I was behind the wheel when you took a photo. Huh? Alright, I don't care who you are or what you want, but I'll give you ten minutes. Don't test my patience. Sorry to occupy your precious time, but I have to vent a bit. This is the single darkest day I've ever suffered. Of course I know that you don't actually exist. I've just gotten used to having someone to talk to ever since I was little. After all, there were always so many people talking to at once back home, and I had the faintest voice. Anyways, all I wanted to say was, it's way too dark under this truck. Patience now. Just five more seconds. Wait for the shoes to go out of sight. Four, three, two, one. <laughs> Ugh. At least two mouthfuls of dirt won't send me to the hospital, even if this is the dried sand on the chassis we're talking about all right i can feel it this should be the access door leading to the power room on the bottom level it's too scary to walk around outside so i squeezed up <laughs> i squeezed back inside the vehicle to wait for them to return though i'm not sure if phrase 
gonna come back. I feel bad for leaving her behind like that, but it's not like I did it on purpose. One, two. Finally, the valve opened. Oh, is it the wrong truck? Oh no, so, 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 sorry, I got the wrong vehicle. I'll be leaving now. Hold it. I hear something coming from under the vehicle. Oh no. Shh. This was quiet. Quiet down. If you blow my cover, nothing's going. <laughs> nothing's good going to come of it. Nods in silence. We can't afford to let those damned metal crabs crawl into the station anymore. Last time one got in, it totaled three vehicles and shanked two people to boot. Shanked? Go grab a torch. I need to have a look. Gestures wildly in despair. Come out. Yeah, I got these coupons from somebody else. I don't know much about your market here. Then why the hell are you answering our market research questions? Because you asked them. <laughs> oh, that's good. Uh, all right then. I guess we have to throw out the whole transcript. Sorry for bothering you, ma'am. No worries. Monthly promo magazine clipped this for 10% off compressed canned food. When did this kind of stuff start showing up? Alana is pretty incredible. She's got all the little details worked out in life. Everything down to the list. On Friday, go grab a scarf from the old man stuffed tail. Get a friend discount from his daughter. Yeah, she got everything figured out down to the day. The stack of papers can be used to the in the three million trolleys supermarket. In this stack, that's right, doctor. Actually, even my own memory is a bit fuzzy. Is the doctor? Who else is with the doctor? Oh, it's Mia. It's as if Rim Billiton has always been like this. Rusty factories, steel frames stacked on top of each other, a gray skyscape, and Reginium clusters towering in the horizon. Sorry, Mia. I really would like you for you to be able to go home and have a good look around. I was just look I was looking for your parents for a long while. But after the attack on the engineering team, the nomadic pl plate used to live on got dismantled. Aw. The place we're standing right now was probably has the most stuff from the old plate. No worries, Savage. <laughs> this is enough. Thank you so much. Just smelling the rust oil and welding rods is bringing back memories. It's as if I've gone back in time. Oh, what am I even saying? It's only been a few years. It's just... I can still feel myself sitting in the back of the construction truck following my parents and the other folks on the engineering team, waiting for them to set out from the plate. You went with them? It's a common practice in many large families. The household oftentimes is the engineering team. If the team has to go to work in some faraway place, they'll take the old and young with them to make sure they're taken care of. Of course, not all the people in the family are necessarily blood-related. Sometimes, they'll be considered part of the household by just just by living in the same part of the factory. Does that mean back then, oh doctor, there's no need to feel bad for me. It's not like I was thinking about the accident. And besides, I already carefully thought through what I was searching for, even before I came to Rimroth's Billiton. Oh doctor, look over there! I still remember that smokestack! Uh, what's wrong, Amiya? I suddenly remember challenging the other kids to see who could crawl down far the f there the fast the furthest while keeping their tails as clean as possible. Isn't that insanely dangerous? Sounds like fun. I'd like to give it a try. Isn't that ins uh? Sounds like fun. <laughs> I'm not sure you go qualify, Doctor. You don't have a tail. Kirky, <laughs> when's the last time I heard a meal talking like this? I'm not the same six or seven year old kid I was back then either. But at last, I found something I can recognize. This is still Rim Billington, after all. It's how we build our houses. Old buildings are incredibly useful, so there's no need to dismantle them. If you want a new house, just build right on top of it. Okay. Which is why the elders tell us from time to time, from the time we're little, adventurous folk, no matter how far they travel, always know home when they come back to it. That being said, a lot of things have changed as well. For example, the infected person's management law we just came across seems to be imitating Lithanian's legal framework and Victoria's jargon. Amia? 
Someone's been staring at you for a while now. Mm-hmm. I noticed, Doctor. Do you know her? I don't think I've seen her before. Also, I don't think any of the people who took care of me before would recognize me now. Let's keep moving, Doctor. I'm sure it's fine. The coupon flyer and the shopping list to go with it have gotten all mixed up. Now that... What did Alana tell me to get again? Oh, no. They're not going to get anything they need. <laughs> hmm. So that's the whole deal. The stretch from Windy Beach... Windy... Windy... Windy Beach to the Grinning Valley is the most catastrophe-prone place. So... <sighs> Say the messengers. I've seen it myself too. Oh, what's so special about the place? Well, you could say it's an ecology is it's what? Devoid of foul shit. What? Though Billy's natural geography is generally pretty barren to begin with, this area is so barren that you won't even find foul beast droppings. You want an easy route? Not even in your dreams. If you want a road paved for you, you can look towards the rocks raining from the sky. And don't expect to find anything fun to do either. J all you find is the usual Billy stuff, ready to kill <laughs> at the drop of the hat. Alright, so other than the foul beasts that don't poop, any other special creatures to look out for? Other creatures? Well, there's a scary number of sand beasts, and listen to me here. You don't want anything to do with them. They'll mess you up. Sure, sure, got it. Sand beasts. Nothing unusual about those. Isn't there anything a bit more talkative, shiny, incredibly huge? Anything along those lines? How would I know? I'm not even a professional explorer, let alone a cryptid biologist. Come on, don't be such a rush to shoo us away. Let me just ask you one last thing. Rays of light, a shadow as tall as a mountain, talking. These words don't mean anything to you, right? Say that again, one more time. Rays of light, a shadow as tall as a mountain, talks. Nah, yeah, that's the thing. What? Ah, oh, what a pain. In the end, I really did remember something for your sake. Foronmut. What language is that? Sargonian. Of course, not many know the word to begin with. Huh? Th where's Sargonia? I mean, that doesn't matter here. You should be using your precious time to tell me what the words means. Huh? Did you hear what I said? Almost nobody knows the word at all. So, I've got no way of explaining it. Anything would just come out silly. Nobody's ever really studied exactly what a Faron moot is. It's just a vague concept that I happen to hear about. Forget it. Just act like you never heard anything from me. Don't even think about it. And certainly don't go throwing that word around. Nothing irks my tail more than a fake news getting spread all over the place. I just end up running around for nothing. All right, all right. Afraid you ever said anything. Don't need your thanks or your words of praise. Your ten minutes are up, and the doorway is that away. Are we clear? Yeah, clear as day. Although I'm still going to thank you anyway. The first bit you said that this is a thing. That's good enough for me. Huh? Rays of light, shadows, tall as a mountain, Faron moots. Who the hell would believe anything so crazy? These made-up legends are growing out of control. People really ought to stop <laughs> trying to mess with me. Ugh. How about I finish these goddamn investigation reports and head on over to the Grinning Valley to take a look? Hi, hey, nice. What do you think? If you're planning on going, then of course you have my full support. Even though I don't know anything about exploring archaeology, there has to be some way I can help. Huh? Nah, I was just... I was asking how you felt about getting kicked out after 10 minutes. Didn't you tag along so I wouldn't lose track of time chatting with my old friend? Looks like I didn't need your supervision. That's true. <laughs> you know, when you really can't muster a smile, you don't have to force yourself, even just a bit. If you're tired and want to vent, I'll make sure no one sees you. Ah! Finally, I found a nice tunnel I can hide in. I'm saved! Huh? Hurry, get your rear in there. As a friendly reminder, the left side's the sewage pipeline of the Celestis Processing Factory. I'd hop over to the other side if I were you. Thanks for the million, Alana. Oh, wait. Fancy meeting it's you here. Raises an eyebrow. 
Um, I can explain. I think someone's seen through our disguise and is setting up near the checkpoint. Ray seems to have gotten herself tangled up, but I'm sure she has a way out. Just a sec. The people chasing you are after us because of what we've done? Uh, I'm not too sure about that. I mean, my thing definitely doesn't matter. I just happened to be hiding in the wrong place, so I got caught in this Kara's, uh, Kyra's mess again. Grab the rope, Jerry. Y yeah, got it. I'll help you throw the knot over, and then we you can lower me down. In any case, that's the situation, Alana. Don't worry about me. We've got to run now. Did he actually get himself involved, or is he just running because he happened to see someone else running? <laughs> but you know, Potlid, don't you, don't you the one next to him? Don't you the one next to him looks kind of familiar? Don't you think? Okay, don't you think the one next to him? Life really is terrifying, and you can't run away from it. No matter how much you might want to, well... Actually, I'm never wanted to run away. I always went with the flow safely and securely, along with my thirty-six other siblings and the other three hundred thousand people in the city. After all, you naturally gravitate towards whatever's the most stable. But I got attacked out of nowhere. I ended up skipping out on my engagement, and now I'm actually on the run with my very own two feet. I don't know why, but even as I'm being chased by all these sorts of things and running for my life, in the end, a door always opens for me. Uh, uh, are things getting better or worse for us? Logically speaking, if there's a nest of metal crabs beneath the sewer, we ought to contact a security officer. That's what it says under the Beware of Wildlife sign. Bad news is, we just barge straight into their home in an attempt to escape. Ha! Huh. <laughs> I can't feel my lungs anymore. Don't slow down now, unless you want to end up cut to ribbons by those pincers. I, I really can't deal with the whole running away thing. Do I come across as some career criminal who's constantly on the run? I'm just... I just wanted people to think I went missing. So I crawled into the bed of my hardware store's delivery truck and went to sleep for a day. Then, the cargo box ended up getting transported away as usual. And I found myself walk waking up in someone else's vehicle. And here we are. You're not a career criminal? Thank goodness! I thought I saw your face somewhere before on a wanton poster. But... I don't mean to say that you look generic or ordinary. Oh, you know. You know, I had a question in my mind. You really went and helped someone you thought was a wanted criminal? I just felt I had no choice from the very beginning. I didn't know why those men were even chasing me. Plus, I think you're actually a good egg. Same as the ladies who abducted me and brought me here. They're actually pretty decent. Ah, uh, so loud. Hold on, where are we? I found an idea. Let's hear it. Huh? You're letting me call the shots? This is rather new to me. Long story short, that sounds like... That sounds the smelting plant's automatic waste filtration and disposal system. I've seen someone falling off it in one of our company ads, except for a terrible fracture. My point is, if people can fall from it, that also means that he has. there has to be a way up. We might be able to climb up on top of that thing. There's no way for the metal crabs who could chase us that high... And our pursuers won't ever, will never expect us to leave the factory. Let's go this way. You want us to walk across these rickety platforms that look like they could flip over at any moment's notice. I keep burping, I'm so sorry. At a moment's notice, along with these iron slabs that could easily bend, send us flying, it's not completely impossible. The robotics arms are on a timer. I'll climb up first and look for the control room. It'll be safe as long as I manually operate the arms. I saw Alana driving the transport. The operating lever for the mechanical platform should be just like the vehicle's shifter. I might be able to pull us off. I should give it a shot. I mean, I can't say for sure if it's going to work or not, but I trust you. You can do it. Just go for it. You trust me? Wait, not only are you willing to let me call the shots, but you're also placing your faith in me? Dear Lord, not one of my 36 siblings have ever dared. <laughs> but you're also smart and independent, just like them. Um, I'm sorry, Kara, but the platform's taller than I expected. I can't reach. Can you give me a little boost? A boost? Like this? Here. Th that works too, but I would kindly... <laughs> 
I was kind of thinking my back or legs are... Whoa, you're strong. Great, I made it up. Awesome. Whispers. And you're nothing like the elders constantly trying to dictate my life. They're going to end up in love. They love each other. <laughs> so what you're saying is nobody's on to us and nobody's tracking us? You didn't kill anyone with this, did you? Yeah, no. Nah. There were so many things on my shop on your shopping list. I didn't have a free hand to draw my weapon. All right, as long as you didn't cause any trouble. <sighs> I have more than my fair share of excitement. That incident at the checkpoint was already hard enough for on um, Potlid. Where did our resident coward go? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, we've we're finally safe. We actually did it! Thank you. I really mean that. Thank you so much. Huh. My timid heart's still ready to jump out of my ribcage. I I actually followed through with my decision? And such a dangerous one at that. Quit bashing yourself over the head with the briefcase already. People are staring. Oh, uh, sorry. It's just that I'm a lot more used to going along with other people's plans. I had a big family, and things got pretty loud. Yeah, I get you. Most people are pretty much the same. Everyone joins in and things get noisy, whether or not they're actually blood-related. It's been a good decade since one of my sisters went out to travel across the lands, and a lot of the others don't ever don't even remember that she left Rim What I'm trying to say is it's perfectly normal to be forgotten, just as it's perfectly normal for 20 or 30 people to suddenly remember you at once and start talking about the same things through on repeat. Huh, <laughs> how right you are. You know, I skipped out on my engagement today. Which is how I ended up out here. It's also why I'm so afraid of getting caught. Well, actually, the whole thing was foisted onto me because of a little dust up. But afterwards, I... Is Lady headbutting the dust or something? My dust keeps shaking, and I don't know why. I realized that I was pretty happy to be getting out of that marriage. I didn't... It hadn't dawned upon me until then that I was really against the whole arrangement. I don't even know the first thing about the woman I'm engaged to. I just felt like so many smart people in the family said I should do it. So I had to do the right thing. Right? I totally get you. The elders in my family always try to push their experiences onto me. And I got so sick and tired of their nagging that I wanted to disappear. Even though I left the old factories and went to, to, went to Carrots to an assembly line, they still packed every themselves into a transport for a solid half day just to tell me that they found me a proper man. If I had gone along with it, then I would have missed everything that happened today. Um, it's nothing. You go ahead. Um, Kyra, I'm just thinking. The two of us have been a pretty good rapport, and uh, my company recently rolled out a new insurance plan with really broad coverage. I don't know if you'd be interested or not, but, huh, insurance? I'd be glad to help you with your work, since I do owe you one for today, but what kind of insurance are we talking about here, and how much does it cost? No, 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 Miss Kira, it, that's not what I meant. It won't cost you any money. I just wanted to ask, how would you feel about becoming a beneficiary of this insurance plan I just bought? Beneficiary? In other words, if anything happens to me, then the company will pay you a large sum of money. As for the specific terms, I can go over the details with you if you have time, after all, a beneficiary is someone very important to me. Goodness, what's gotten into me? Am I making decisions for myself again? And I swear, this has to be the most important decision of my life. Kara? I know, this is all so very sudden. But it's how I really feel. I just had to blurt it out. The old me would have just kept it bottled up in my heart, thinking over and over about how to get the words out. And if I did get them out... Worrying if I stuttered or not. Huh? Am I not stuttering anymore? Oh! It's not a big deal, though. If you don't want to, then maybe I shouldn't have sprung it on you like that. Maybe I... I'll do it. It's more in line with my personal principles than going along with whatever the elders have planned for me. Really? You're fine with it? Oh my god. I really have to tell my siblings that I'm not going to let them lead me around by the nose forever. Totally. They're always going on about how they've been through so much and know better. My whole family's got a suite of rules when it comes to who can we can marry. Like how everyone loves a codus with long ears. Huh? Codus? Ah, uh, yes. I don't know how to say that word. It's not going to 
to sound good. <laughs> I'm the only Zelik in my family. I guess I got handed off to this family when I was little. I forget about that a lot. I, uh, same as people forget about me. Besides, what a big fam what big family isn't cobbled together like this? Ah, uh, and they like loud talkers. My relatives are more the quiet types. And industrious businessy types. Who knows? Who know how to make a sales pitch? Even their appearance. Wait. You just mentioned that you were skipping out on an engagement ceremony, didn't you? Wait, were they supposed to get married to each other? That'd be so cute! What the hell? Lens, if we don't leave now, we'll be surrounded by drivers bringing wine barrels over to collect bottle tree water and won't be able to get out. I know that already. Seriously, didn't that Zalek say he was scared to death that something terrible would happen as soon as he left the vehicle? I told him everyone's free to get off whenever they want, and I wouldn't do anything to stop him. Nah, the way he was talking, I think he was scared he'd run into the girl he was engaged to. Ray, Alana, hurry up and give me your contact! Huh? I'll send you the details later. Wedding invitations! Was it them? Were they... Was she the groom? Or is he the groom? She the wife? That's crazy! The groom. As far as I can tell, the road ahead should be pretty safe. No traces of big beasties, no sign of the ground getting hollowed out by the wildlife. Huh. Maybe the last blessing the Zalek left you is actually doing something for us after all. Have a safe trip, and you'll definitely find what you're looking for. Faranmut, huh? Pretty tough. Just going to be by the sound of that word, huh? If you walked up to me and told me, we're going to find the Faranmut, I wouldn't have questioned it for a moment. Though... I didn't think you'd also read the road conditions. Hardly. I don't have much experience, so I'm not a real lookout. I just think looking out into the distance with binoculars is pretty neat. That's all. Weird. The power system's temperature display seems a bit off. Jacker, did we miss something just now? Like a geyser spewing steam by the side of the road or active originium on the surface causing a small-scale explosion? Nope. I made sure of it. What about Potlid? Oh no. Where did she get herself to while we were looking outside? Wait, is she in the power room? That's so cute. So they were the. the he was supposed to marry her anyway. And then. Let's see what it says. During the wild chase, he happens to find a woman and they develop feelings for each other. Hammer down. Normally we don't get closure right when something happens. Just like when mom and aunt Gemma had the argument in the middle of the night. Such a noisy one it woke the neighbors. They were arguing about the same old, how should the factory go about starting up the wheat grinder and the rice miller without disturb the workers rest. Uh, just like those young Billy businessmen who helped the farmers and the factory workers build a coalition during the cage incident. Even though they made an effort to break free of the grasp of the counts in the Victorian Chamber of Commerce, how many of them were just in it for the business? How many of them actually cared about the future of Rim Militaritonians? Also, just like that one trip with the Doctor and Amiya, maybe some questions will always have some sort of closure. Eh? Don't know where you're going to gonna go yet? Wasn't heading back to the nomadic platform to search for traces of your childhood just the first stop along the journey? Like, what happened to the second stop and the third stop and so on? I filled a tank of gas and even prepared a, prepped a portable stove and tent. Besides, the Rim Billiton Miner's Cup is in the group stage right now. If we head straight south, we might be able to make it in time to the cross-country cross burden beast race across Big Hammer Mine. Or maybe we can go for some Rim Billiton's local specialties? I've committed a lot of fantastic eateries to memory over the last few years, especially the ones that have opened up inside of hollowed out mining tunnels. In any case, Kultzit said that you guys don't have to, any work coming up for the next little while, so why not put that whole Victoria thing on the back burner for now, Burnier? 
There's no need to be pushy, Savage. It's not that I'm too worried about what's over the horizon to enjoy the trip or anything. What I mean is, I think I might prefer how we used to do things before. Like, just wandering around without uh, any particular goal in mind. Well, um, that might not be entirely accurate either. I'm sure the doctor had some idea of where we were going. I did? Because as far as I can remember, it seems like new things are hap it seems like new things are happening every day. And there are always different sights to see. If we were just casually tour if we were here to casually tour through Grim Billiton's Barren Lands, we'd probably just end up seeing a whole lot of sand, mines, and originium clusters. Well about that. I think that's more so you're having a streak of bad luck and getting yourselves into trouble for the whole way there. At least Amiya's more than capable of holding her own, and I'm not the same empty-headed, hot-blooded newbie as I was before. Even if we run into a, a scrap, I'm sure we can resolve it without too much hassle. Ouch! Sorry about that, Doctor! Doctor, are you alright? Did you bump your head? It's fine, my head's still intact. Savage, what happened? Why'd you suddenly slam on the brakes? Take a look over there! See that transport vehicle over there coughing up smoke? Oh, what did... What did Potlid do? <laughs> Jacker, go get some bottle tree water. The more the better. All right. Bring a tarp over and help her hold it up. All right. Then grab some tape and tie her to the con <laughs> condensate vipe. Vipe pipe. Then dri dip her feet in cold water and give her a good soak. Okay, but why? The trade secret. Doesn't matter if it's a fever or a burn. It's the fastest way to cool down. Medicine's fine and all, but you sometimes need to tackle the external problem head on, and this is the way you do it. Lons, don't worry. There's nothing to be scared of. I've got meds. I figured something like this would happen sooner or later. Hurry up and drink for me. She's burning up. She has the strength to swallow the meds, so it's not as bad as it could be. The fever should be going down soon. Yeah, I know it can't be that serious, trust me. It's the oropathy. Alright, I believe you. But I don't think... What she has is a fever. I know. It's her arts. She used them to fiddle with the temperature of the power plant again. Without my permission. Should have dawned on me a lot earlier than I realized. When I realized how smooth the ride was. And how much power we had driving on these roads. I don't know how many times I've told her not to go around casting with her bare hands. But she just can't get it drilled into her head. She's always eager to prove her own worth. Silly girl. What a darn fool. I knew from the moment she got in the truck that she was dumb and stubborn. Damn dipstick. <laughs> we can always find a doctor. We're not that far from a platform. You're not getting anything from those docs that I can't already do. Trust me, we'll be fine. We can get through this. If you say so. Alana, the power cabin's getting hotter and hotter. Yeah? Can't tell since my back's still dripping cold sweat. Ah, she's burning up. How is she, is she this hot? I've got another folk remedy. Can you go catch some originium slugs? Alana, there's the bell. Someone wants to board. Ah, go chase them off, Jacker. No, you should go. It'll be bad if her arts go out of control. She'll hurt herself and others too. What are you trying to say? No way. No way it could come to that. Not a chance. She's my own adopted daughter. You just wait, Ray. I'll take care of this. I'll be right back. That's so sad. Uh, if an infected gets sick or that their arts start going out of control, it should be another infected to deal with it. That way, even if they disintegrate, it'll at least won't create new victims. That's standard protocol on the job. That's so sad. Well, the doctor's here, though, so she's fine. Get out. Wait a sec. I'm the driver of the vehicle over there. I've got tools. Do you need any help? Help? Huh. With what? I'm doing just fine over here. We're just taking a little break over here. So if you want to help, buggering off and <laughs> just do just, just fine. Huh? But your you over there is giving off white smoke. Doesn't look that to be in a great shape. That's just how it is. I'm the one driving it. Think you know better than me? Sorry, I'd still like to get in and take a look around. I don't have time to give you a ride. Last warning, go away or I'll make you go away. You're shaking. Who, me? You don't kid yourself. Though, so, that gear you're wearing. You're a troublemaker who's done something bad, aren't you? And you're a merc out for the hunt for infected people, yeah? 
An explosion from inside the bus? Struth, I told you to bugger off. I don't have time for you. Hey, wait! What's going on in that truck? Its body is damaged in several areas, and the front's rather deformed. The smoke should be coming from the condensate pipe, not properly dispersing the heat. And then there's the driver. She seems to be worse for wear than the bus itself. Poor gray ears. The engine has long since stalled, but the sound of water flowing through the condensate pipe can still be heard from the power cabin. cabin. The temperature inside the cabin is unusually high, but the drenched pot lid continues to shiver. Alana said this was supposed to happen. Just a bit longer, then. As her words trail off, Potlid's lips quiver slightly, as if sleep-talking. Ray thinks for a minute, a moment, then holds the girl's scorching hot hand. Though the hand subconsciously tries to shrink away, it has no strength to do so. Burning hot. It's alright. Now I'll be able to see that how badly your arts are going out of control. This isn't any miraculous technique or anything, but I can at least reduce the danger a bit. Some people are fine sticking their hand in the sand, their head in the sand. Some coop themselves up in abandoned mine shafts and wait for the whole thing to get blown over, and blown up and sealed off. And others try to run far away from the, into the barrens. Sure, people get sick, just like old parts get rusty. Bound to happen. As long as you handle it properly, it won't affect anyone else, and it won't turn into a big deal. No, I I don't want this, Ray. Easy there, Gray Ears. Your temperature's still high. A long time ago, everyone in my family, the whole family, they were all infected. Right. All of them knew how to put their noses to the grindstone. They built their own homes and lived simple but fulfilling lives. I was happy too. I can make a big pot of soup and share it with everyone. They'd eat yummy food, and then they'd get better. And after they got better, they wouldn't need to come back anymore. Easy now, Gray Ears. If your temperature gets any higher... Like that? You spark crackle through the air. I can't hold you anymore. I know what I'm doing, Gray Ears. Some people don't know how to control their own strength and end up hurting people or even killing them by accident. But that's not me. I'm going to knock you out. You'll just be a sore for a few days. I'm letting go now. If I eat more and grow up more and my sickness gets better, Dad will also come back. Why are those people on the road looking for infected? Why do I have to hurt lawns just because I'm an infected? The rawness of the blisters on her hands forces Ray to pause. Ray, is it bad to be an infected? Well, great ears, you must be hurting. I can feel it. There are times when, orp when the orpathy flares up and I can't sleep, I know. But when I remember that a ray of light shining through, I can relax and finally close my eyes in peace. Haran Moot. Calm, great ears. Calm down, I will find it. Potlid! Potlid! How's she doing? You, this blood. Alana, I. Great ears is fine, but stay back. Her heat's gone down a little. She's already caused a small explosion, Alana. Get these damned internal components and broken pipes, are they a big deal? The pipe is whatever, but the medicine doesn't seem to be working. I see, I said you needed help. Huh? The saw, wrenches, duct tape, and this girl, I've seen her before. Why'd you tie this little girl up? What are you doing to her? What am I doing? What am I even capable of doing? Alana, I'm not an idiot. You think I don't know these tricks don't work? You don't know the- what? You, you think I don't know these tricks don't work? You think I haven't seen an old friend getting heat stroke in the workshop? Then being tortured with these crude methods to the point where he never came back to work again? Rusty Wrench managed to survive, couldn't talk anymore, but he could still work. Old Bobby said it saved his life. But you think I don't know they're the exception that proves the rule? You really think I know- I don't know orpathy is an intractable disease? This dumb kid doesn't know that. She thinks she can be cured. What else can I do but play along? I believe in the little medicine I can get my hands on. And whatever folk remedies I reach my ears, I just can't watch another one die in front of me while I watch helplessly. It's the doctor. Greetings, ma'am. Mind if we take a look at the girl?
Amiya, sleep peacefully now. You don't have to burn yourself anymore. I'm sorry for using my arts on you. May you be free from the pain and suffering of orpathy in your dreams. Your subconscious casting has already stopped. Good work, Amiya. I'll just say good work. I could feel it. She's a deeply wounded girl. Is there anything else I can do with help? Can I can help with doctor? We're good for now. A simple injection should take care of things. I'm done with my arts too. Go ahead and let the others in. Is she really going to be okay? Mm-hmm. Her subconscious casting has stopped, and the activation process of the originium crystals inside her body has also been halted. But the fever symptoms haven't been completely relieved yet, and we'll have to continue monitoring her for a while. I've been driving this truck for around who knows how long. Never thought I'd run into a doctor in a place like this. All I can say is thank you. You're welcome. Treating the infected has always been Rhodes Island's duty. That said, I'm not a doctor, and the doctor is, well, not that kind of doctor. Just to be sure, we should get the Rhodes Island branch office, get to the Rhodes Island branch office ASAP, where we'd have real diagnostic and treatment equipment to properly manage... Jesus. I don't know what's wrong with me today, but it's been really rough. So we can get real diagnostic and treatment equipment to properly examine the patient. Rhodes Island? That reminds me, the girl gave me a card saying that some lady told her to give it to her family. Oh, I'm the lady. The girlie was clearly infected. I figured her family ought to understand. Huh, found it. This is the one. The symbol of the ex excavator drill pointed straight at the sky. The what? Ain't easy doing business around Rim Bulletin these days. Competition's too fierce. So I figured it wouldn't be a bad idea to get, go tucking inside. Instead. Inside? What? But your company offers some serious benefits. It's absolutely wild that you'd have such an advanced medical department in a construction firm. If only the Billy companies could learn from you guys. Um, Alana, I think there's been a little misunderstanding. But I do agree with you. If all Rim Billiton's companies committed to raising awareness about the orpathy prevention, our young patient here might not be in such serious condition right now. And we should really put what we do at Rhodes Island front and center on our business cards. After all, the infected rarely have proper access to medical services. In any case, we'll have a proper medical team dedicated to Wormy's treatment at the branch office. If it's not too much trouble for you, I'd like you to drive for the nearest nomadic city. Sure. Wait, hold on. There's a bit of a special situation with the truck. Once we go back, we might not be able to leave again. Plus, I have an agreement with someone else. Special situation? Oh, that reminds me. You're supposed to be a transport, right? But if you keep going in that direction, the only thing waiting for you is an uninhabited wasteland that's prone to catastrophes. Wait, don't tell me. You're planning to pl go plant bottle trees there? No, we're going... We're going to search for the Farron Moot. Farron Moot? Please don't leave Wormy behind. Don't worry, nobody's leaving you behind. We're just having a little discussion. Hotlid? You're awake? How's your head? Are you dizzy? Are you still running hot? Lons, you look upset. Did something happen? I think I just had a long, tiring dream. Mm, at the very end of the dream, I think I even saw the Farron Moot. Ray asked me, asked me to take a good long look at the giant shadow. I looked and looked as hard as I could, but I couldn't make it out. Lons, can I go with you to find the Farron Moot? Oh, that's so sad. No one's leaving you, Potlid. Here, try this. This is all we have now. It's hardly enough to express our thanks. Not only did you save Potlid. But you're even willing to travel with us to make sure she's okay. No worries, Alana. We had no particular destination in mind to begin with. Also, the doctor's intrigued by the pheromone that you're talking that you mentioned. It's done, Alana. I've pulled into the transport bay. The rest of the journey is up to you. Heh, <laughs> no problem there. But there's one thing I still don't understand. What exactly is this pheromone that you're searching for? It's a type of uh this massive all you need to know is some sort of mythical creature. I've heard there are incredible explorers out there planning to turn these legends into documented columns. As for this beast, it flies for months at a time over the windswept dunes of Rim Billiton. Billiton! Flying over the highest peaks to spew flames at the sun. 
It appears in the mist of nightfall with a luster more brilliant than the moon's. We set out this time to look for some more useful clues. Isn't that right, uh, Ray? You talking about the lady with the crossbow over there who's hardly said a word the entire time? Forget it. She can enjoy the cold wind by her lonesome. In any case, that's how mighty a fern mood is. Eh? That legend sounds all over the place. Don't think I've ever heard anything about this sort of thing before. I've heard of it. A massive foul beast devours the sky and the clouds in the sky before it can finish eating the last cloud. Right before the day sky falls, the people on its back all jump into the boundless sea of stars. A long time ago, the doctor used to tell me the bedstorm stories like that. Sorry, don't remember that. I did? Well, um, of course you put it in different words, but... I have a vague memory, your tone at the time, it really made me want to believe the stories were real. Never would have guessed it. But, looks like our friend here has quite a vivid imagination underneath that hood. But, we're not fair after fairy tale stories here. We're looking for the real deal. Hey, Potlid! Mmm. The freshly stewed, piping hot sweet potato soup is ready. Oh, that's not what it's hit. Woo! This is some good stuff. Hurry up and dig in, everyone. Appreciate it, Wormy. Don't mention it. There's also veggies that's cooking in the pot. Wait a minute. This flavor. Why does it have a hint of originium slug? Um, well, I did add a little bit of slug slime. I've tried it before, and the flavor is not too bad. It's soft and chewy. Doesn't stick to your teeth, and it shouldn't be poisonous at all. Oh, I think you're onto something. By the way, Alona, the food you served up before was pretty good. I didn't expect you to be such a cook. Is it really so surprising? Do I look like? <laughs> do I look to you like a woman who doesn't know her way around the kitchen? The factory workers were always tripping over each other to get at my food. Though my real specialties are way more flavorful. Don't care at all for this light, time-consuming stuff. So everything you ate just now, from the beet soup to the originium sli slime, sweet potato stew, was all prepared by Potlet here. I deserved it. It's Warmy's work? I know she's getting better and all, but are you sure it's wise to let her do all that by herself? Let her rest up, and I'll handle the rest. Calm down, don't go bugging her over it. She can handle it. If anything, I think she'd be sad if she felt like there was nothing she could do. She's always been like that, wanting to prove that she's all grown up and capable, which is how she ended up in this condition. Oh, right. Alana. Yeah? Has Wormy been through something? Even though she's always smiling and full of energy, I feel a deep sorrow coming from her. Her inner feelings seem at complete odds with her smile. <laughs> kids like to act strong and tough. That's all there is to it. But normal kids don't cling to it that way. It's because of her father said. It's because of what her father said to her before he left home. I wanted you to grow up happily, just as you are now. The day before he left, it was her birthday. Nasty business, right? Children tend to take things like birthdays and birthday wishes awfully seriously. Then where is her dad now? Who knows? All I know is the girl relies on me because every time her father left home from work, it was in this vehicle. Miners are the most common types you'll see aboard. The codices, a oh, close second, and her father happened to be both. Like hell I'd be able to pick him out of the crowd. Though, did I ever mention to you that this old girl's about to go out of commission? Because several of the mines I used to stop at got shut down. The last one was due to deep, deep, deep depletion. All the rocks that got dug out of the ground were totally worthless. And then, two years ago, a mining accident claimed another. So, it was over the last two years. When this kid hopped aboard, hopped aboard, saying that if she didn't keep the brightest smile on her face, her father wouldn't recognize her. That's so depressing. What the fuck? All right, I'm not. I'm gonna go give her some motivation and a helping hand. She's probably a bit too fired up right now and wants to make a miner's family dinner on that little originium stove you guys brought over. Yeah, you're pretty nice people too. It's been a long time since she's cooked for anyone else. Though, I hope what you said when you sat down at the table is true. They won't end up, that you won't end up getting sick breaking bread with infected. Or at least, you're like me, you know? Good things happen to good people and all. So, that makes it perfectly fine to live with the infected. She didn't know the danger she was putting herself into when she 
decided to keep warming around. Amia? I'm here, doctor. Do you feel guilty about it? Do you think fate smiled on us? Do you think fate smiled on us? Oh, is it written all over my face or something? I was just thinking. I keep thinking, what would have happened if you never pulled me from the wreckage of that vehicle? Walking along the streets of Rin Billiton, I always feel like so those running and shouting Kadis children are no different from me. Disasters aren't uncommon in Rim. Billiton, I'm gonna just say Rim. No, Billy. Little Billy. <laughs> the dangerous old ways of mining. The unusually frequent catastrophes. <laughs> there were some Victorian businessmen who said this is no way for people to live. Oh, of course I'm not trying to say that life in Rib Billiton was terrible or anything. Though the natural environment here may be harsh, our homes were always full of warmth. Rim Billiton's large households often came together to jointly adopt children. But I'm just happier that I get to do something like this. Like being able to help Potlid? Um, yeah, help Potlid. Also like being able to rescue you. And before that, the young Kadis doesn't finish her words. You know nothing, there's something she's hiding from you. Amiya's expression is somewhat wistful, but there's no sign of regret or remorse. Now that I look back, now that I'm looking back, every year since I left home has been so terribly long. Everything seems to be speeding by around me before I can grow taller, before I can grow taller and change out of my childhood clothes. So I find myself wondering, when I think about my mom, mom and dad, what should I say to them to give them an idea of what I've been through so that they still recognize me? But coming back to Rim Billiton, it finally dawned on me. The only thing that I want to tell my parents is I survived because the doctor took my hand. That's sweet. You suddenly remember something. You remember the huge Rim Billiton logo emblazoned on the laser mining module mounted atop the Rhodes Island landship. You remember seeing it before. You remember some of the materials that Rhodes Island had gradually been making available to you. What? Available to you lately. Rhodes Island's predecessor, Babel, customized this rim billets in the mining module that was attacked during the initial shipment. The mercenary team dispatched by Babel failed to stave off the attack, resulting in the deaths of many people in the transport team. You remember the thick black smoke slowly burning in the empty wilderness. Wilderness. Vague, distant motions float into your mind, along with the hazy memories. Though it still doesn't feel like your own past, you cannot help but to feel an infinite loneliness. What I wanted to search for was the vestiges of the journey that began here as well as the traces of Rhodes Island being dug out from here and towed across the entirety of Rimp Billiton before setting sail for the far reaches of the continent. I was just thinking, if I had never met Rhodes Island, if I had never met Dr. Kaltzit or Theresa, 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 if I had never met the doctor, what a shame it all would have been. Oh. Whew, finally helped tidy up around here. But seriously, never would have expected Alana and Warmy to be living together inside a truck like this. Good thing I didn't charge in, waving my hammer around to try to rescue Warmy, or else this thing would have been a goner. Speaking of which, when was the last time I had a campfire dinner with this many people? Has there never been, has there ever been another time where I got to enjoy such a merry one with Amia and the Doctor? A grunt? That's it. Does it make your does it not make your blood boil? Those bastards in suits want to plunder our minds. And since when did my friends become as snobbish as the Victorians? Sorry. I was just thinking about the stories in the old books. Don't look at us like that. The way you look at the stars in the sky. Even back then, I wasn't able to I wasn't always happy every time. Eh? Amias and the doctor, they're fast asleep? Must have had too much fun and gotten excited, tired, huh? Seriously, it's not safe here. You'll catch a cold at this rate. Oh, that's so cute! Oh, that's so cute! Savage? Huh? Doctor, you're awake? It's pretty dark tonight and I couldn't see your face clearly and... Did I wake you? 
There are some beasts out there that never sleep. Some people are still awake. So you're looking out for Amiya, huh? Fair enough. The Billy Barons have always been dangerous. And the people you meet aren't always sit friendly. This is so cute! I love this! They aren't always so friendly. Which is why you have no idea how anxious I was when I first met you. You, a sickly foreigner trekking through the wilderness with a little girl in tow. You were a goner! You weren't afraid because you didn't know a thing about Rimbilitan. I could write it off as a Mia trusting you regardless, but it wasn't until a lot later that when I understood why she always slept so soundly next to you. You make me sound smart. You make me sound like I'm always on my toes. You make me sound smart. Well, yeah, you have to have a good grasp on everything. You have a good grasp on everything and lots of tools at your disposal, but there are other areas where you don't seem that smart, which became evident the more we traveled together. Like that one time you said, I know these berries are incredibly bitter, and then you took a big pint of them <laughs> anyway before urging Mia not to do the same. <laughs> oh, mind if I take a seat? This is so sweet. Just like it was. <sighs> I wanted to tell you something along the way, but we ended up getting tangled up in another weird mess again. At least there wasn't any real danger. Were our travels like this back then too? What? Were our travels like this back then too? Oh, okay. Well, for me, the biggest difference was my attitude, I suppose. To be honest, I was a bit disappointed back then and wanted to go for a walk. A really long one. I heard about it from the other Rimba telling... But Billitonian operators, you would have been even more famous here. Well, yeah, it was because of that cage incident. But after everything was said and done, I followed you and Amiya on that trip, and to everyone else, it seemed like I'd ghosted them, but by the time I returned, they'd mostly forgotten about the whole deal. Which is exactly what I wanted. At the time, I saw businessmen signing contracts to develop the mods for the people of Rim Billiton, but... They turned around and threw us into cages. Same, same way predators in the wilds kept snatch your meals. Holy fuck! But I'm even sadder about the ones who promised to protect our land together, swearing not to let the old duke strip us of our dignity. Some people, as soon as they tasted wealth and status, turned out no different from the businessmen and robber barons. Huh. Just thinking about this makes me want to swing my hammer around and smash their glass houses to bits. Please calm down, Savage. Oh, I'm so, so sorry, Doctor. I didn't mean to scare you. <laughs> I It feels crazy to, to telling the story again. In any case, I was absolutely furious at the time. I couldn't stand that feeling, like people were suddenly plucked out of their own skin, made to become completely different people. That look in their distant eyes didn't seem like any way you'd ever look at a friend. To sum it all up, I can't trust them anymore. And so I have trouble understanding certain others. Might I by any chance know one such an individual? Whoever those certain others are, I hope they can live up to your expectations. Um, might I by any chance know any one such an individual? Yeah, don't worry about it. My hammer's just for protecting you. You and Amiya both gave me your answers. Amiya already told me she's willing to go down that path and doesn't regret it at all. I can see how heavily that burden sits on her shoulders, but now, all I can do is try to help her carry some of that burden. As for you, Doctor, this isn't right, Kaltzit. What are you planning? What are you playing at here? What happened to Amiya's body? How could you leave a child as young as her to suffer this? Tell me, was this the Doctor's decision? Is she nothing but a pawn to the Doctor? I, I wanted to swear to it. Don't want you to swear to it. I couldn't shake the doubts that I had, but I also wanted to have faith in you, so I asked for a vow. You promised that after you took Amiya from Ribbon Billiton, that you'd do your best to treat her with kindness and let her grow up healthy and free. Yeah, I know. There's no use asking for answers from an amnesiac doctor. But how about you, Kaltzit? Are you waiting too? Alright, so you can play at that game. Time will tell all. The same goes for you, Doctor. If there's anything you need me to do, please let me know. Point into the distance. Hmm? Already? 
Oh, that's right. She's been sitting there all night. Doctor, are you trying to say that she's a threat? Or is your assessment something altogether complete, altogether different? Hi, Ray. It's gotten late. Why don't you warm yourself by the fire? If anything, you should go rest and replenish your stamina, since you were the one who got hurt today. Warmy made a ton of food and Alana already put it away in the truck. I can go grab it and heat it up for you if you want. Like, I, she's quite the chef, you know. I feel bad if you have missed out. How's she doing? She's fine now. Actually, you should go see her yourself. Thank you, all of you. But I, I felt her pain. I always thought I didn't fear pain, but now I can't stop trembling. The woman holding the weapon is not shaking at all. She simply stares into the night sky as if she dares not avert her eyes to look somewhere else. I've been infected. I've seen infected burns themselves to ashes. Sometimes the only choice for those infected who can no longer be saved is to send them away. Something like that should never happen to Wormy. I feel so terrible. From the very beginning, I was the reason why the truck went off route. Yeah, Alana told me everything. Do you want to turn around and leave? No. But at least I should. Good enough for me. I mean, even the doctor's interested in that Farron moat that you mentioned now. Whoa. The stars sure are beautiful, aren't they? I've been staring at them for a while now. I can't say. All I know is they're far, far away and shimmering in the darkness. It's slightly better than staring at just at the darkness. Are you afraid of the dark? No. It's always so dark in the mines that I've long since gotten used to it. What the hell is that? The, the mines, huh? Well, I guess you probably don't care too much of too much of them, then. I totally get you. I used to work underground as a security officer, and it was always stuffy as hell. I also know that sometimes people are afraid, too afraid to look at the things around them because they don't want to be sad, so they look up at the sky. What about you? What do you see? What are you looking for? Why did you decide to go truck jacking in the first place? I'm so excited for the next one now. Holy fuck. Holy fuck. That's a lot. So, that was really wholesome. It would be funny if I think what happened was that girl was the one he was supposed to marry the whole time. And they both tried to skip out on the wedding and found out that they actually liked each other a lot. <laughs> that would be hilarious. They're sad. Their backstory is awful, though. Amiya and Savage? Being locked into a cage? Being locked in cages while you're mining? That's awful. And... Damn. That's just... I mean, like, it's literal slavery in this world, then. That's crazy. And, like, it... I don't know. That's just crazy shit. I don't even know how to process that. Um, Wormy's getting better though, and that's super. That's super nice. She used too much arts and got sick. And hopefully, I mean, she becomes an operator that you can get now, right? Hello, Ray. Uh, this, right? No, this details. Yeah, Wormy. So Wormy's a character you can get now. So she joins Rhodes Island, and hopefully gets better then because. I mean, we helped her already, but it didn't cure her. Obviously, there's no cure. Another new room. Engineering's doing a good job. I got another. Oh. Uh, I have one. Thank you, random stranger. I don't know who it was. Who was it? Kokino. Okay. And wolves. Uh, who needs mine? There you go. Never mind. Yeah, this is it. This one keeps flip flopping between wholesome as hell and depressing, and I'm loving it a lot. Yes. And I'm back. Is Cruz here too? No. Um, it's this is so much fun though, because it is switching between the de deep depressing shit, but then it's like, on, but then it's like wholesome at the same time, because like pot lid. And Alana, Alana sees Potlid as their own daughter, daughter, as her own daughter. 
and it's so wholesome and like she's so worried for potlid and it, oh i'm loving this i hope that you guys are too um this is the end of the video though so if you liked it like and subscribe i love i love having you guys around um if you want to join the discord it's in the description i'm still trying to decide on a game to play for another series um the most answers i've gotten is minecraft so that might be what i go for but i'm not sure at the moment so we'll see in the future um and if you want to support me go over to my ko-fi and buy me a coffee i'd appreciate it a lot that's it for me though so you better have a good night and bye bye